doesn't make you fat. It's carbs and sugar that do. That's it. The video is over. That's all I have to say. Hi guys, welcome to another video. And today we're talking about ketogenic diets, why we would even use a ketogenic diet. What is it for with weight loss season coming? Obviously we're in the month of December. Everyone wants to know what can I do to, to support myself? What can I be doing to help myself? At least if you're not thinking about this now, come January 1, you will be. And I wanna talk a little bit about the whole premise behind a ketogenic diet from multiple aspects, a weight loss perspective, a clinical perspective in terms of balancing out the digestive bacteria, all of the little intricacies of this diet or way of life. So stay tuned. What is a ketogenic diet? I feel like I've heard of that before. I don't really know what that means. I think it's basically Atkins. It is, it's basically the Atkins diet from I think back in the 80s or the early 90s. The whole premise of the ketogenic diet is to be eating high fat, moderate protein, low carb. The, the way it works is that in the absence of carbohydrates, our bodies can actually start to burn fat as the primary fuel source. We actually take advantage of this for people that are looking to lose weight. But back in the 1940s, this diet was really implicated for children, little ones that were actually having epileptic seizure disorders. What they found is that when children are carbohydrate restricted, their seizures, their brain activity was entirely different. And what they found was that when there is carb restriction, children didn't have the same brain activity and they actually had less seizures. Fast forward time with doing research about this, they did find that not only does this diet support seizure disorders in little ones, it actually works for a whole metabolic shift. A lot of you guys that are watching this might know about this diet only from a perspective of weight loss, but that's just really one small piece of why somebody would embark on a ketogenic diet. We actually can use this diet for so many things regarding metabolic reset, balancing out digestive bacteria, balancing out cholesterol products, using it for diabetes, using it for prediabetes, using it for high lipids, high cholesterol. We can actually use this for many clinical reasons, pancreatic issues with blood sugar. That's the premise of it. Let's talk a little bit about what, what you need to know from a ketogenic perspective. Okay, couple, couple little tips and tricks and things that are gonna be helpful for you guys if you think maybe this will work for me, maybe I should partake in this, maybe I should try this for the new year. Let's dive into what the ketogenic diet actually looks like. Before we do that, there's a couple things you have to know. In the world of nutrition, we have macronutrients. Macronutrients are the building blocks of our cells. Protein, carb, and fat, three macronutrients we actually can change the numbers in terms of grams of these macros to shift our body chemistry and weight. Chemistry and weight are not the same thing, but we can change our macros or our macronutrients, our protein, carb, and fat in different ways to support a specific goal. The premise of a ketogenic diet is that the macronutrient of choice is fat we're actually eating the most fat when we're on a ketogenic diet. So anywhere from 125 to about 190 grams of fat. The next macro would be the protein. So in order of step appearance, if you will, the ketogenic diet macros are in a split that is basically fat, protein, carb. Carbohydrates typically have to be under 25 grams of carbs. I know what you're thinking. Wait a second, 25 grams of carbs. What does that even mean? <laughs> 25 grams of carbs means that one banana, one apple, one pear, you're out, you're out, you're out, you're out of ketosis. The body actually interprets ketogenic or ketosis, which is a metabolic state of living in the bloodstream as a light switch on or off. There is no dimmer switch when you do a ketogenic diet. You are either metabolically in ketosis or you are not metabolically in ketosis. The way that you get bumped out is if these macronutrients aren't in their appropriate grams serving size. I guess you could think of it that way. So fat is high, protein is moderate, carbs are under 25 grams. 
you pull out carbs, but you get other things. So is it restrictive? Is the ketogenic diet restrictive? No, it is not restrictive. You get to eat tons of food, good quality. And that's really where the difference between clean keto and dirty keto come in. Dirty keto is someone that's just eating really crappy quality fat. They're having qu crappy quality meat. They're eating just whatever they can find that is going to fill them with fat. We want to do a ketogenic diet in the caliber of clean. So clean keto is a term that you guys might hear as you learn a little bit about this. And all that means is that when I'm doing a ketogenic diet, I'm making sure that I'm eating foods that are good quality. I'm eating good quality fats. I'm having full fat, organic eggs, um, really making sure that the beef I'm consuming is grass-fed organic beef, no herbicides, no pesticides, really good quality food. If you're gonna do any dairy on keto, sheep cheeses, goat cheeses, no cow. That is the whole premise around keto is that we're eating a lot of fat, we're eating medium protein, and we're eating very low carb, 25 grams or under net carb, which we'll talk about in a few minutes here. That's the premise. Why would anybody want to do this? In the absence of carbohydrates, we totally transform our digestive bacteria. The bacteria in our gut don't know how to metabolize certain nutrients, and they only know how to metabolize certain nutrients. So you actually can use this to shift the good and the bad bacteria that live in the digestive system. People that are doing um, diets for small intestinal bacterial overload typically do a carnivore diet, maybe even a paleo diet. They, they pull out a lot of carbohydrate load. There's no real metabolic need for carbs except that we like them. Protein, it's a macronutrient that has building properties. So protein is our hair, it's our skin, it's our nails, it's forming things in our body. Protein carries hormones. We need things. Protein is a metabolic requirement for health as is fat. Fat is the requirement in terms of building cholesterol, in terms of building all of our hormones. So every single sex hormone that we have in our body comes from the 22 carbon molecule of cholesterol, which is a fat product, cholesterol product. We do need cholesterol and we do need all of these fats to produce hormones. Fat is actually providing our brain and our spinal cord with good healthy fats to protect our nerves. So the myelin sheath, it's a protective cord of our certain nerves in our body and it helps us. So things like MS, multiple sclerosis, there's a demyelination syndromes happening where the, the myelin or the thick coat around the nerve is starting to have holes in it. The way I think about that, the way I give an example is imagine a cord like a plug-in cord, an extension cord. The thick core, the extension cord, it's bright orange or whatever color it might be, that's the myelin sheath. It's protecting the wires that are inside the actual um, cord and the insides are the nerves. The point is that fat is a metabolic requirement. We need fat, it builds things, it does things for us, it helps with menstruation, even for men, there's a metabolic need. Carbohydrates don't really build much if anything at all. They do stimulate insulin and insulin is a very anabolic hormone. It's very good for growth and development, but too many carbohydrates actually create problems with insulin and do the opposite effect in our body. They start to be more um, catabolic. We start to have too high load of carb creating catabolism rather than building. So the ratio of the macronutrients, the protein, carbs, and fats do really matter when we're on a ketogenic diet or any diet really, you know, we can track our macros anytime. We don't have to just be on a ketogenic diet, but typically that's where we start to get comfortable with what's called tracking macros, which means counting the number of grams in terms of protein, carb, and fat. Why would someone want to do this? Well, we talked a little bit about that. It's good for little kids that have seizure disorders. It's good for grand mal seizures, petite mal seizures, really just any type of eccentric brain activity or excess brain activity have had benefits. Those types of patients um, and people have had benefits from ketogenic diets. We use this for weight loss. In the absence of carbs, we burn fat. So fat burns fat, which I know is really, really scary. Whenever I'm working with some of my, my patients with this type of nutritional strategy, they panic when we talk about keto. They've heard of it. They're like, I've done it before. It hasn't worked for me. And I talk about them eating the most fat and the looks on their faces are like, I am trying to lose fat. Why do you want me eating fat? Because fat burns fat. 
in the absence of carbohydrates. That's a really important note. Fat burns fat only in the absence of carbohydrates. If you are still eating carbs with a lot of fat, you will gain body weight. Think of this kind of metabolic nutritional profile as playing with numbers. You're basically becoming an accountant. You're playing with your protein, your carb, your fat, and you're putting them in a number value. Ketogenic diets have been really, really beneficial for digestive issues and high cholesterol. So you might be thinking, I have high cholesterol. Am I a candidate for a ketogenic diet? And the answer is yes. I use this in clinical practice all the time with my pre-diabetics, my diabetics, and my high lipid patients. We actually pull back their carbs and we add in protein and fat as their preferred macros. And it does wonders to their blood lipids wonders to their blood lipids. I had a gentleman that came in for care and he had cholesterol in like the 300s, triglycerides were seven, 700, HDL was very low, maybe under 30, LDLs were 175, very bad lipid profile. And we put them on a ketogenic diet after three months time, massive improvements, no using any types of pharmaceutical drugs, nothing like um, you know, any, any statins or anything like that. Really good progress. So this is a very great diet for people that want to change their blood chemistry. It's really also a great diet for people that are having low energy, chronic fatigue type symptoms. Carbs cause spikes in our insulin and our, when our insulin goes up and down and up and down and up and down all day long from the carbs that we're consuming and then skipping meals and then eating carbs and skipping meals, that actually hurts us. Insulin is a hormone that talks to the thyroid. Insulin is a hormone that talks to pretty much all of our tissue. And when we're doing this very spiky thing with our insulin, it's actually causing problems to our hormone systems and to our energy. So from a fatigue perspective, we really wanna make sure that we're actually getting some good energy coming in from nutrition that support our energy and our brain fog. I love this diet for so many people. Now, not everybody is a candidate for this. And I want to share with you guys a little bit about who is not a candidate for this. People that are having problems with digesting fat are not the best candidate for a ketogenic diet. You can use this if you don't have a gallbladder. So if you've had your gallbladder removed, can you still do keto? Yes, but you'd want to get there very slowly. The concept is to become fat adapted. And that is not a concept or a metabolic shift that happens overnight. Somebody that's used to using carbs as their primary fuel source, as their primary preferred energy source, when they start eating higher protein, higher fat, they're constantly hungry. They're not feeling satiated, they're not feeling filled. The reason why is they're not really adapted, their tissues have not adapted or gotten used to using those macros as the preferred fuel source. People that are not candidates for keto are people that are not necessarily adapted to fat yet. Can they get there? Absolutely. We can get them there. I would always recommend for people that are doing this to work with somebody because this is not an easy thing to get into. There's ways that we want to test your blood sugar. There's strips that we can use to test if you're putting ketones, which are the byproduct of burning free fatty acids into the urine. There's ways that we metabolically can track. Are you really in ketosis? You know, we want to make sure that you're losing body fat, you're losing out of post. This is not for the faint of heart. You really want to make sure that you're working with someone to guide you as to what should my macros be? What is the integrity of my health before I start this? Do I have problems digesting fat? Do I have enough lipase? Is my liver and gallbladder in a good place to be able to process this? If there's any lymphatic issues going on, this might not be the type of diet for you. The liver is very involved with lymphatic issues, lymphedema, fatty liver disease, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Those types of conditions do well with keto, but it needs to be structured and it's not something that you're going to get to overnight. Buyer beware. I always like to share this. Just like if you were purchasing a house, you're not going to walk into the house and say, I love it. I'm ready. Here we go. I'm ready to move tomorrow. That might be the goal, but there are some, some side notes to this and one of which is the ketogenic flu. When you change your chemistry, you will feel this. So if you're coming from a place of eating high carb, high carb, high carb, 200, 300 grams, 400 grams a day, and you drop your carbs down to 25 grams, your metabolism and body and your gut will be like, what? 
is happening here. Your hormones are going to go kooky. You might get sick with a keto flu, which just means you're going to, you might feel achy. You might feel extra tired. You might feel really lethargic. You typically get a headache and you're always very thirsty. Your bowels can get a little bit sluggish. Carbs hold water. When we don't have carb coming into our body, we don't hold as much water. The ratio is about one gram of carb holds about 3.3 grams of water, 3.4 grams of water. When you don't have carbs, you're like a little prune. You're dehydrating from the inside out. You don't have extra water. Without that additional water, it can dry up your bowels. So a little side note with keto is expect that there could be a ketogenic flu. Another little side note is you typically have some constipation that could happen. It doesn't last forever. The keto flu doesn't last forever, nor do, do the bowels being constipated. It's a metabolic transition. And I actually encourage people that when these things happen, don't look at it as this isn't the right diet for me. Look at it as, wow, there is a massive shift going on in my body and I'm feeling it. I'm really feeling it. My head is feeling it. My joints are feeling it. My body is feeling it. My movement's feeling it. Sleep disturbances can happen. You might not sleep the first couple nights when you embark on this. I, I'm really not selling it, am I? I'm saying all the things that are um, not really wanted, but these are just expectations. I still really enjoy using this diet clinically. I really like it. There are ways to, for those of you that are wondering, can I do this if I'm vegan, if I'm dairy-free? Yes, there's ways to do a ketogenic diet if you're dairy-free um, and you're not having any type of cheeses, no beta casein, no cow, sheep, goat. You can actually do this. A lot of the recipes by default though that you'll find on this type of nutritional profile are very fat based. And where do you get fats? You get them typically from full fat cheeses, full fat um, yolks, you know, egg yolks. So if you're someone that's dairy free, you can still do this. You just have to really build your grocery list, making sure you have enough of what you need to support you through this process. There are still things that I recommend when I do this for people that are just off the table no matter what. There are some things like, for example, peanuts. I never recommend whether you're doing keto or not doing keto. They do contain aflatoxin. They're very bloaty for people. They're actually not even in the nut family. They're in the legume family. So they really respond kind of adversely to people's bodies. I don't recommend anything peanut. I also really don't recommend a lot of cow dairy. Sheep cheeses, goat cheeses, goat products, um, sheep products. You can get a little bit of flexibility with those, but I don't typically recommend to do da uh, dairy from a cow even while you're on keto or on any style of diet. You won't see me really recommend that. Just from an inflammatory perspective, those foods are very inflammatory producing. A lot of you guys probably are wondering, well, what happens if I come off keto? Will I gain all the weight back? No, your body is adapted. You don't gain the weight back necessarily. You will gain a little bit of water weight back because carbs hold water, but there are ways to come off the ketogenic diet. You don't just go from keto, keto, keto to the next day I'm eating a bunch of carbs and I'm totally transitioning. There is a, a step process that has to happen where you ramp nutrient, nutrients up and then you drop them down. It is something that people can do for years. I know people, myself included, that have been on a ketogenic diet at one point. I was for about a year. I love it. I loved eating fat. I felt really good from it. I didn't feel any metabolic energy being low. In the beginning, yes, my workouts were a little bit affected by it, but you, you know, everyone's different. Everyone's genetics are a little bit different. They're their DNA and their body can sometimes respond better to fat. So I think it works at least to try this. I think I would suggest for everybody at some point to try this. I hear a lot of negativity around this and I always ask the person, have you tried it? Yeah. Well, how did you know you were really in ketosis? I don't know. I just, I just did what I was told. I just ate a lot of fat. This is a very clinical approach. There's a lot of moving parts to this. You might need certain enzymes to help you process the fat. You might need certain supplements to ramp the metabolism up. You might need a little help getting into the fat adapt adaptation process. You can't knock keto if you only tried it for one week. There is a basically a path that you have to travel on for some time and really give it a fair shot. I think a lot of people that have negative results from this typically didn't give it a fair shot. They didn't do it right. They weren't being supervised. They just went on Dr. Google and said, I figured out how to do this. The internet told me how to do it. So that's what I followed. 
no, I don't think you really gave it a fair chance. And I don't think it's right to say that you tried this and now you're giving your critiques when you really didn't try it. Okay, so just be mindful with that. I hope that you guys are uh, getting some value from this so far. I just want to make sure I'm answering all the questions. So what is keto, the macros of keto? Now, everyone's macros are a little bit different. Going back to that concept, people will probably want to know how much fat, how many grams of fat, how many grams of protein, how many grams of carbs. That's like you asking your, I don't know, your accountant how much they think that or asking a accountant and somebody that's an accountant, how much that they think that you should save. How would they know? They don't know how much you make. They're not sure what your expenses are. They don't know what your retirement plan looks like. They're not sure if you have children. Do you have investments? You can't ask those questions because you just don't know. Everybody is very individualized. So this is a very specific protocol for you. When I do ketogenic diets with my patients, I would say, I don't think I've ever gave, given the same macros to any of them, any of them. I don't think any of them ever had the same macros. Everyone is very different. If you are under metabolic distress, if you're dealing with thyroid dysfunction, if you're dealing with Hashimoto's, if you're dealing with hormone imbalance, if you're dealing with polycystic ovaries, would this be the right diet? Yes, but the dairy-free version is always a good thing to do. Now, those are things that have to be addressed prior to trying to obtain a goal of weight loss from keto. So people sometimes will ask me, I wanna lose weight, I heard keto is good, what do you think? I think before we dive into any nutritional strategies, we should look at getting you on enzymes first to make sure that the organs are in a good place, to make sure that you're processing all your fats, to make sure that your pancreas is balanced, you're not overproducing insulin or underproducing insulin, making sure you don't have antibodies, antithyroid peroxidase antibodies, antithyroglobulin antibodies. Do you have enough vitamins? Do you have enough minerals? Is your lymphatic system activated? Is your waste system on? Those are all things I would encourage prior to getting started with a ketogenic diet. You don't want to just dive in and say, oh, Sally said she's doing keto. Let's start keto on, on you know, in February. Really want to check to make sure it's the right thing for me. It's the right time for me. I know my macros that are custom to my specific body. I know what nutrients, what supplements I'll need. I know if I should be adding MCT, medium chain triglyceride, into my coffee. Should I do bulletproof coffee? There's so many things. A lot of times when I'm working with people, they're not in ketosis, but they're under false pretense that they are. And I look and I'm like, oh, you're eating all of this fat, but your carbohydrates are 75 grams. No wonder you're putting on weight. You cannot have all three macros. You just can't kind of like teeter-totter. This goes up, this goes down, this goes up, this goes down. That's how we play the game of keto. You will start to see a lot of this come January 2021 because everybody's going to want to know, how am I going to be getting in shape for the new year? 2020 might have been a wash for you, although I think it was a year of so much expansion, so much growth, extremely difficult year nonetheless, but a year that I think really as a um, collective society and consciousness we are waking up i think we've been living under the veil of consciousness for far too long and it really jolted us in a way to shift ourselves and i feel you know if you're a tony robbins fan he always says that people don't move when things are easy people move in crisis that's just the human condition we move when we have to move and i think that this really jolted us and shook us to our core each and every one of us to realize for us to realize we cannot go on the way we were living before with a lot of things. With that being said, I think that 2021 will be the year to really support yourself, learn about your health, learn ways you can be healthy, support yourself with viral load. And a lot of you guys might be wondering, would this work, would this type of eating work to prevent viral load like C19, I'll call it C19, Absolutely, because when your blood sugar goes above a certain number, your immune system drops by a certain percentage. So I believe it's when your blood sugar goes above like 175, your immune system drops by 75%. Your white blood cells, your monocytes, all these immune system cells, they run away screaming. So is it the appropriate diet for people to drop their carbs to protect themselves from getting cold and flus? Heck yeah, heck yeah. Are carbs causing people to have problems with not healing and inability to repair tissue? Think of diabetics. You might know an aunt, an uncle. You might even be diabetic yourself. We typically know diabetics, they don't heal. They get a wound, they cut themselves, and they don't repair. Why? 
sugar is the direct culprit as to why they don't heal. So when our blood glucose is elevated, it directly affects our ability to heal our tissue. We can think of that from an immune system perspective. If I want to protect myself from picking up a virus or a bacterial load, is it therapeutic for me to try something where my sugar levels are down? Yes. Carbs are sugar. You can think of them the same way. So carbohydrates are glucose molecules. They're all just attached differently. You know, glucose and fructose, um, galactose and glucose. There's many different kind of base pairs that create different carbohydrates, but sugar is sugar is sugar nonetheless. I think that that answers probably a lot of questions or a little bit of an introduction, at least provides you with a little bit of an introduction around what ketogenic is and why we might use it, what the benefits are. I will dive into a part two of this video because there's so much to talk about with this and this might be just enough information for you guys to start to wonder, I wonder if this would be the right thing for me to implement. You might have questions and want to know a little bit more information. If so, drop your comments down below and just put part two with your question and I'll know to make a part two. That way come January, we're all ready to rock with what we might think is the right profile for us, the ways that we can tap into our, our highest level self so that we can feel good, look good, and really be, be living our best life. Drop it down below if you have any questions. I will see you guys maybe in part two of this video.